course you can. What is it? Are you ever going to get married again? Oh, I don't know. I guess if I ever met someone I could spend the rest of my life with, uh, someone who would cheer me up when I was down, someone who would be there when I needed her, someone I could love, you know, someone who could love me, yes, then I think I would get married again. <laughs> Why are you asking? Because you could sure use someone to clean up this place. <laughs> Probably might come in to pick you up. Better get your things together. Okay, then. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there. Oh, hey, hey, nature boy. How was the fishing weekend? Uh, it was terrific. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. I'm dying to hear all about it. Well, we're out on the lake. It's very, very calm. Yeah, is Matt ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll be out in a minute. Listen, John, I gotta go out of town Wednesday night, and I was thinking that... Uh, well, I feel kind of bad about leaving Wendy all alone, you know? How come you never left her alone when I went out of town? <laughs> well, well, I just thought that maybe you two'd like to go out to dinner. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Mike. Allowing me to take my ex-wife out to dinner. <laughs> oh, I just remembered I got a date that night. Yeah, darn. A date, huh? Back in the saddle again, huh? Good for you, John. You get knocked off, you get right back on again. What's it been now, a year and a half? Don't start, please, don't start. No, John, I mean it. I really feel happy for you. You don't know how miserable it's made me, knowing that you don't have a life. I had a life, remember? I had a wife. I had a nice house. Remember my study? How's my garage, by the way? John, 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 don't you know any other songs, huh? Hey, hey kiddo. Ready? Yeah. Okay, Matt, Hi, just... Dad, see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Hey, Dad. Why? Got a spot on your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought of that. <laughs> How come I'm not surprised? <laughs> okay, see you, sport. Next week. I'll push the button. Oh, listen, John. Wendy and I really felt lousy about uh, forgetting your birthday last week. Last month. Uh, whatever. <laughs> we were wondering if you know, there was a present that you might want. Well, thanks, but there's nothing I can... Well, I, I actually... Well, no, 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 forget it. No, no, John, what? Well, don't, just name it. Well, you, you remember that antique Wedgwood vase my grandmother left me? Oh, the one you lost in the divorce? Yeah. I would really like to have that back. See, I don't know, John, we weren't really thinking about anything that expensive. <laughs> Romantic beach in New Jersey. <laughs> I'm stripped to the waist and I'm running in slow motion towards this beautiful woman with long blonde hair blowing in the wind as she's running towards me. I'm full of passion. <laughs> My blood is racing. As I reach her, I throw my arms around her and I lift her up towards the sky. And suddenly, I realize it's Mrs. Traco, my 75-year-old kindergarten teacher. <laughs> what do you suppose that means? It means you can't even get lucky in your dream. <laughs> Fox on Big John. Have a rest, would you, Kirk? Hey. Ooh. <laughs> 
somebody's not getting enough fiber. <laughs> Minds, dear. Oh, nothing important. It's just that Mike dropped by to lay a little humiliation on me. And you let him get to you again. I can't help it. He knows how to push my buttons. And your wife's button. <laughs> a joke. Oh. You're not going to believe this. He's going out of town, so he asked me to take Wendy out to dinner. He doesn't think of enough of me to even get jealous. That man trusts me. I hate that. So what'd you tell him? I lied. I told him I had a date that night. And he believed that? <laughs> sometimes I really feel like such a wimp. You know, John, sometimes I feel the same way. Don't worry, it passes. John, you're letting this whole thing with Mike destroy your self-confidence. No, 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 it's not just Mike. I had trouble asserting myself in everything. Oh, come on, now you're exaggerating. No, 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 it's true. It, it's true in everything. For instance, every morning for the last six months, this uh, very attractive lady stands at my bus stop and, well, we nod at each other once in a while. We even smile at each other, but I can't seem to get up enough courage to break the ice. Dear, why don't you just walk up and say hello to this woman? It could be a big step in making you feel better about yourself. Just say hello? Yeah, could help bring back your self-confidence. And once you get that back, even a scoundrel like Mike won't be able to bother you. Just say hello, huh? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hello there. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, okay. All right, on Monday, I'm just going to walk up to that lady and say, hello there. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, John, do what I do. Walk up to her, put your hand on her torch, and say, pardon me, is this seat taken? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm having a terrific time. Oh, me too. I've got to admit, I was a little nervous at first. Yeah, isn't it crazy? Huh? For six months, we've been eyeing each other, and just like that, last Monday, it just happened. Yeah. Hello is such an easy word to say. I know. I wonder what took me so long to come over to you and say it. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget the morning I saw you for the first time. You were all bundled up in this big parker and this fur hat and red muffler around your neck. <laughs> I just wanted to come up and ask you out, but I wasn't sure there was anyone in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I noticed you, too, that morning. Your ears were so red, I just wanted to walk over and nibble on them and warm them up. Really? <laughs> I just sort of walked over to you. <laughs> or at least sent one of my ears over to you. <laughs> I guess I'm just a slow mover. You mean like that guy over there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why don't they stay at home? I don't think they're going to make it home. Good thing this is a hotel. They're not going to make it to their car. How long do you think we have to watch this? I don't know. Another kiss like that, they're going to make a move to the smoking section. Oh. Kind of rude, isn't it? Yeah. Check, please. Yeah, that was nice. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Where's that check? No, 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 you don't understand. That's Mike, my ex-wife's boyfriend. So? So? That's not my ex-wife. So? So? What's he doing here with that bimbo? He should be home in bed with my wife where he belongs. <laughs> It should be haunting you. <laughs> She's been worm food for 20 years. <laughs> what? Pay no attention to him, Ralph. Dreams are the voice of the subconscious. Perhaps you have some unfinished business with Mrs. Craco. Yeah. Is there something you might have been holding back all these years? Something you wish you'd said to Mrs. Craco? Well... Come on, Ralph. Purge yourself. Well, say 
say it, Ralphie. Say it. Mrs. Franco, it's my turn to finger paint. <laughs> it's true, it's true, it's true. Things that go around, come around. Good things come to those who wait. And every dog will have his day. <laughs> Just sit right here. John. Yes? I take it you got up enough nerve to talk to that woman at the bus stop. Oh, I not only talked to her, I took her out. Oh, well. It was sensational. It was fantastic. It was the best night of my life. Oh, I think John got a kiss. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I got something a lot better than that. I got Mike. You... Yeah. You kissed Mike? No, 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 no. I was sitting in the restaurant at the Wembley Hotel with, uh, what's her name? And I, was, I looked up right across the room in a booth. Necking passionately is good old Mike when another woman. <laughs> a sexy, tempting, luscious redhead. I got him. I got Mike right where I want him. Between a redhead and a hard place. <laughs> John, come on. Come on. Necking passionately. Kate, Kate. He was caressing her shoulder. He was stroking her hair. He was biting her neck. What do you call that? I call that saying goodbye to the mailman. <laughs> Let me tell you something, uh, the passion didn't end with dining in the dining room. It did not end with dinner. It ended with breakfast in room 402. Heavens, John, you didn't follow them, did you? <laughs> oh, come on, Louise, what do you take me for? I bribed the room service waiter for a copy of their breakfast check. Mike made a big mistake. He sure did. He paid 1950 for French toast. <laughs> This is Mike's one-way ticket out of my life. And when I show him this, he's going to beg, he's going to plead, he's going to cry, he's going to squirm. But it's not going to do him any good. I'm going to force him to call Wendy and tell her what he did. And when Wendy finds out, oh, I know my ex-wife, God bless her, she'll kill him. John, you're very emotional right now. You're not thinking clearly. Yeah, don't do anything you might regret. Regret? Regret? Kate, I'm going to have a grown man down on his hands and knees begging and pleading. What could be better than that? Two men? <laughs> Who is it? Mike. Ah, uh, be right with you, Mike. <laughs> See you, buddy. Yeah, I uh, I don't have much time. You want to see me? Well, I appreciate you coming by. Just uh, sit down, make yourself comfortable. So, uh, how was your trip out of town? Uh, I didn't go out of town. No, really? Well, you know what they say, the best laid plans. <laughs> now, listen, Mike, I, I've got something I want to tell you. Yeah, well, save it, John. i got something more important to tell you. I doubt <clears> that. I know I said I was going out of town Wednesday night, but I didn't go. You bet you didn't. And you know why you didn't? You see, a few months ago, I met this manicurist at my barber shop at the Wembley Hotel, you know? Stop. What a knockout. I mean, she's, she's built exactly the way a woman named Brandy should be. Full-bodied, smooth, and 25 years old. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> anyway, John, we get together from time to time. When her boyfriend's out of town with his team, he's a, he's a pro football player. Out of town? Mm -hmm. I thought this was a one-night stand. This is an affair, a whole affair. You're having an affair? Ah, John, John, you're blowing this whole thing way out of proportion. It's just sex. <laughs> it's just pure, unadulterated, cheap, marvelous, rocket to the moon sex. <laughs> just, listen, doesn't mean a thing. Wait a minute. What are you telling me this for? Well, I've been thinking about it a lot lately, John, and I, well, I wanted to talk to you about it. You know, you never cease to amaze me. I've known you for 20 years, and I've had any idea that you could be capable of feeling guilty about anything. No, I don't feel guilty. I saw you at the restaurant that night. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I came this close to thinking you were human. I gotta show you something, old man. Your room service bill at the Wembley Hotel, a breakfast check. Oh, my God. I paid 19.50 for French <laughs> And now, 
And now, you're going to call Wendy and tell her all about this little affair of yours. <laughs> that's what you're going to do. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Tom. <laughs> that's too much. Hi, Wendy. Uh, guess where I've been every time the Jets have an away game? <laughs> <laughs> you kill me. <laughs> you know, if I were you, I'd make that call because if I make that call, it's going to be uh, ugly. I'll take my chances. I'm warning you. If you've forgotten, John, the number's 549. You don't think I'm going to do this, right? That's 549. I'm dialing. I'm dialing. It, it's ringing. It, 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 Wendy's ring. You hear it? John, you care too much about Wendy. You'd never do anything to hurt her. Hello, Wendy, it's John. Listen, I got something to tell you, Wendy. M Mike's on his way home. And that's the way I met Tommy Dorsey. <laughs> I never knew you spent your youth traveling with big bands. What kind of singer were you? Oh, I wasn't a singer. I just traveled with big bands. <laughs> hey, 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 Johnny boy. So, come on, how'd it go with Mike? Huh? You hang him out to dry, John? Did he get down on his knees and beg? No. Not even one knee? No. Will you bend a little? No. Oh, John. How humiliating. Yeah, you must feel like dirt. <laughs> you know what Mike did? He handed me the phone and dared me to call Wendy to tell her about him and that redhead. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get myself to tell Wendy. I'm a coward. Oh, John, 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 no. You are not a coward. You're a wuss. <laughs> What? That is the difference, Louise, between him and me. I never would have folded like a weenie. <laughs> I remember when I was on Pork Chop Hill. Oh. Inching my way up through the mud on my belly with a knife in my teeth and a grenade in my hand. I peered into a pillbox, I pulled the pin, I looked into their eyes, and I said, there, have a nice day. <laughs> and boom, I blew their Waldos all over the 38th parallel. <laughs> but you, my friend, you looked into your enemy's eyes, and you blinked. And that's why he's got your house. <laughs> he's got your wife. And in case you haven't noticed, John, he's got your self-esteem. Oh, don't listen to him, John. Now, you just put Wendy's feelings before your own. You proved you're a man of integrity. John, if you want Mike to end this affair, perhaps you should talk to him and appeal to his sense of decency. Sense of decency? We're talking about a man who committed his mother to a nursing home when she was 42 years old. <laughs> John. All right, bury your head in the sand. Just sit around, do nothing, and torture yourself. You're right, you're right, you're right. I want to do something about this. Where are you going? I want to get my self-esteem back. Way to go, John! And don't blink! <laughs> Kurt, the Korean War was over 40 years ago. You were on Pork Chop Hill? Yeah. <laughs> But if it's all the same to you, uh, I'd just as soon not talk about it. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, thanks for buying me dinner, pal. I'm glad you decided to let bygones be bygones. Hey, why not? What's the point in being vindictive? Oh, thanks for driving me home. It was nice being back in my old car again. <laughs> Oh, listen, you know, I, I would have let you drive, but I got the seat adjusted just the way I like it. <laughs> listen, uh, the reason I planned this whole evening was because uh, I think we need to talk. Oh, I, I couldn't agree with you more, John. And I want to let you know that this, this whole stink that you made about, well, threatening to tell Wendy about me, well, well, 
I forgive you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I, I think you should stop seeing this brandy. Oh, 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 Johnny boy. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that's a good one. Boy, I, if you looked up in that mirror and saw what I saw, you'd know that I just can't let it go. So it's your intention to uh, go on seeing this girl indefinitely? No, I didn't say that. No, no. Just till the Super Bowl. <laughs> just wait a minute. L let me ask you something. How would you feel... If it was Wendy who was running around and cheating on you. Oh, Wendy wouldn't cheat on me. She cheated on me. I know, I was there, remember? <laughs> so what you're trying to say is that there's absolutely nothing I could say that would make you change your mind. Absolutely nothing. Good. Mike, meet Rudy. Brandy's boyfriend. <laughs> uh, so, John tells me you're a friend of Brandy's. Who? <laughs> No, I, I, I don't know anyone, no, named Brandy. And anyway, she never told me she had a boyfriend. Well, you two probably have a lot to talk about. John, John, <laughs> don't go, John. Who was that on your shirt? What? Oh! <laughs> John told me that one. Yeah. Oh, this is Mike. If you need anything, just holler. John? <laughs> John? Jonathan Rollins of L.A. Law. I rest my case. L.A. Law does television justice. Next. And Friday night, take the plunge with the Baywatch team. The dynamic duo of Battles and Cas on Hardball and a new kind of American hero, Mancuso FBI. Friday, only on NBC.